Hi everybody, I'm Kathy McMillan, the author of The Runaway Shirt from Familias Press, and I'm so excited because I am here today with the illustrator, Julia Castanu. Now she is actually in Spain, and so I had to bring her in on my phone. Here she is. Say hi, Julia. Hi. Hold hi, on, I gotta everyone. turn you, hold this hi. the right way. Yeah. I hope you had a chance to watch our video that we just premiered on uh, my Facebook page where I shared the book with you and Julia gave an art demonstration. If you haven't gotten a chance to look at that, please do because it's pretty cool and you can learn how to draw some of the clothes from the runaway shirt. So we thought we would answer some questions. If you have any questions about the book or about making picture books, please feel free to put them in the comments and we'll be happy to answer them. And we're just gonna kind of have a conversation about the runaway shirt and how it came to be. Yay! So I guess I'll start. I'm gonna hold Julia closer here. I, I gotta figure out how to hold you so that you're not like tipping sideways. Um, and everybody's getting a little view of me. Everybody's getting a little view of my messy office in the background there, but that's okay. So I guess I'll start by saying uh, I wrote the runaway shirt, the runaway shirt. Um, the story came out of a game that my own kiddo, who is now a teenager, and I used to play when I was folding laundry, and my kiddo would climb into the laundry basket and pretend to be a shirt, so I would just kind of play along with the game, and I always... I cannot figure out the right way to hold you. I'm sorry. Um, don't drop me. Don't drop you. Ah! <laughs> um, I would. I loved uh, Pizza Pizza by William Steig, which is a similar story in which the parents are playing an imaginative game and pretending the child is a pizza. So that's kind of where this went. Um, and one, it's funny because one of the things with writing picture books is that you are always told don't use art notes. Um, don't or use them judiciously because art notes, for those of you who don't know, are notes from the author to the illustrator about uh, what should be in the illustrations. And one of the things that editors and illustrators hate is when the author is providing lots and lots of very specific notes about what everything should look like. Um, and in this case, of course, I had to have some art notes because a lot of the action is taking place in the illustrations and you wouldn't know what was going on if you were reading the manuscript if you didn't have notes saying, you know, when the lady says, oh, I will fold this shirt, she's actually picking up the child. It's not really a shirt. So this was a, a case where we needed those art notes and I tried to keep them very, very minimal um, because I know I am not an illustrator and I wanted the illustrator to be able to kind of let her imagination run wild, which she did. So I am very excited today to talk to Julia because um, I, I'm a word person, I'm not an, uh, an art person, and illustration to me is like magic. So I want to hear more from Julia about her background and um, and how she approached this project. So Julia, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about how you became an illustrator. I'm gonna hold you up closer. Hi, um, um, well, I think I went to art school and I was one of those students that um, uh, go throughout the whole, um, throughout school without knowing, very, knowing well what to do. And um, it was actually uh, when I did one exchange, one year exchange uh, in the US at SUNY as we go, um, that I met uh, a, my, illustrate, my illustrator um, professor, illustration professor, uh, that I started to really get into, into children's books and I and I thought hmm, maybe this is something I could do one day um, and yeah and from there I I worked uh, I went back to Spain I worked for a few years as a as a graphic designer and then I went to London and I got my master's degree in illustration and that that kick-started everything and I guess I've been officially a children's book illustrator for the last two years. Wow. This is my full-time job now. So when we were talking earlier, you mentioned that this is your first picture book, but you've done other yes. children's book projects. What kind of other projects have you done? Um, I do a lot of work for education. I, so I, I work a lot with um, uh, publishers that work in, in for schools and things like that. And I've done... Um, fiction uh but for older all older 
children. Um, sorry, not fiction. Um, what's the opposite of fiction? Non-fiction. <laughs> Non-fiction. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> um, it's nerves. It's the excitement, <laughs> guys. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm really excited uh, about, about this little book because um, I put a lot of love into it. So I hope you love it as much as I do. I definitely do. There's something very exciting as an author to see your story come alive in a way that, you know, you might imagine what the illustrations could look like, but I don't have that good of an artistic imagination. So I never have any clear picture. So the illustrations feel like magic to me. And I feel like the way that you brought this story to life and really showed the playfulness and the relationship of the parent and child was spot on. So yay. <laughs> And, oh, wow. <laughs> and it's, you know, it, like I said, I didn't really have a very clear picture of what it would be. But when I was shown the illustrations, uh, my answer was immediately, yes, that's perfect. So, yeah. <laughs> and one of the uh, things. It's, it's completely the opposite for, for us illustrators. We, we get the we get the manuscript, but I guess there's, there's always that. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. And well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's actually a question people ask a lot. I'm going to make you bigger there, I guess. I um, one of the things that people often ask is that as an author, do you have any say over the illustrator? And the, in the traditional publishing process, you don't. And a lot of people don't realize that. They think, oh, well, you must have picked the illustrator. You must have done all this. And like, nope, if you're self-publishing, yeah. But I would not presume to say that I had the expertise to pick an illustrator. And in fact, um, yeah. we were, I'm trying to figure out how to hold this because it's backwards and I keep tilting it wrong. So I'm sorry, everybody. Um, <laughs> there we go. Um, so in fact, when we were talking earlier, I mentioned to Julia that I have a friend who is an author illustrator and had illustrated many of her own picture books and recently had the experience of for the first time having a different illustrator for one of the books that she authored because she and the publisher felt that there was a it would be better to have a different approach um, than her style for this and I think the uh, the publisher was worried that she was going to kind of micromanage and I think maybe that's part of why publishers don't really have a lot of communication between the author and illustrator although I have to say Familius Press, which published this book, my experience with them in all my books has been that I actually have more communication with the illustrator than in other presses that I've worked with. Um, but it's not its not like I'm talking to the illustrator from the very beginning. Um, in the case of my sign language books, yes, because I was involved in the production of the signs. That was important to make sure they were done correctly. But with this one, really, it was mostly um, they told me who the illustrator was going to be, and they sent me your website. Um, and I think at that point, if I had hated your style, I could have said, no, I don't think that's right. But I didn't. I thought it was great. So. <laughs> no, no, no. So, I mean, I think it, it's that way with a lot of things in publishing. It's not that you don't have any say, but you kind of have to pick your battles. So you're not going to get to pick every single little thing. But um, if there's something you really can't stand, you can certainly fight for it. And in this case, uh, I was thrilled with the choice of illustrator. And then I saw, um, uh, I guess at, at one point they, they sent some different color palettes. There were some different ideas of color palettes. And there was a, an initial illustration of the mother and child that was done in different color palettes. And I kind of got to vote with the team on what the color palette would be. Um, and as you can see, it's kind of the, the green based Sorry, I'm covering you up, Julia, while I show everybody. Um, <laughs> color palette is what we went with. Uh-oh, I lost her. Hold on. 
Sorry, every time a call comes in, I don't know who's calling me this morning, but sorry, you were put on hold again, Julie. <laughs> I was on hold. It's fine. I was still here. Okay. I haven't gone anywhere. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I so I did see some illustrations um, and some iterations along the way, and then of course all of us kind of weighed in on the final illustrations. There were a few things um, where we gave feedback. Um, I gave feedback, the editor gave feedback, uh, different people on the design team, and then uh, Julia kind of did some revision. There, there was one, can I tell them about the one with the cat? <laughs> I have to tell everybody, I, I, I thought it was amazing because I'm a huge cat person. I have three cats. I'm surprised none of them have hopped in front of the screen like Julia's did. But one of the things I love that Julia put in the book is that on, hold on, let me get it over here, on every page, there's a little king cat hiding there. Um, so, you know, there were uh, a few things, a few minor things that we ended up revising. Like, I think in this picture, <laughs> oh, do you remember this one, Julia? Yeah. Because I'm a mother and, oh, sorry. <laughs> Hold on, we'll get her back. There she is, sorry. I'm getting on my spam yeah. calls this morning, sorry. <laughs> So I'm a mother, and originally the, the upper drawer was out further, and all I could think was, he's going to hit his head! The kiddo's going to hit their head! So, uh, so Julia very kindly agreed to move the drawer in a little bit and squish the cat a little bit more, because they're liquid. Of course, <laughs> you know, I'm not a mother, and thank God I'm not one, because um, my child will be at the, at the hospital every day, apparently. Uh, so yeah, of course, no problem. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate that because it really reduced my anxiety a lot. But, um, uh, yeah. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about your illustration process. So when you received this project, where did you start? Um, I guess, well, obviously the first thing you do is you read the manuscript and, and you know, and read it a few times and see what feelings kind of evoke and um, this one this one was really really playful uh, from the beginning i could almost um feel and start imagining in, in my head the interactions of of these two characters um and once i get sort of an idea um i start looking I started looking online for references from other illustrators and, you know, from real life references and, and things like that. And the first thing that we did that you just mentioned was design the character. So originally there were two different iterations. To, there were two mums and two kids and and different different races too and um, also we mix them up to see if there was any chemistry between between the characters and um, after after that we started with the with the uh, color palettes and um, you know I did, the, the, the character designs were slightly different i'm wondering if i can if I can hold my iPad, this is so meta, it's a screen within the screen within the screen. <laughs> um, I do wonder if you'll be able to see, because I have the color palettes here. So this was the the one that we ended up picking. And um, these characters had to me a like a sort of a, a bit of a 70s look to them, a bit like um, mid-century style, whereas these, whoops, these are the two, which were the other two mm. characters I designed, uh, were sort of more modern looking, I guess. Maybe it's just me, maybe I see those things, <laughs> but uh, not necessarily obvious to other people, which is also, I guess, part of all of this, all of the magic. Um, so, yeah, so based on the design of the characters, I chose colors that I felt went nicely with them. And then, to be honest, I was really pleased that um, everyone agreed on the on the first color palette because it's my favorite. That kind of autumn, 
mm. autumn feel to it, but also I thought that the, the yellows and the greens look really nice with these sort of 70s feel. Yeah. And that <laughs> kick-started also, yeah, the thinking about the back, the backgrounds and, you know, the pieces of furniture in the house and all the patterns in the clothes and, and all of that. And once, you know, once you, once you have that sort of idea, I guess, uh, you start storyboarding the pages. Um, I had some really helpful art notes from you. Uh, you know, they, they, they were very minimal. Uh, which is very nice because, like you said, it still lets you as an illustrator um, run wild <laughs> so, um, with very minimal like indications. So here, the mum is holding the baby and is folding its legs. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so yeah, you start imagining where the text could go and sort of making you know compositions and. After that, you start cleaning the sketches and the color, and then the books. Before you realize, the books all come together. <laughs> so, how long does one page spread take from beginning to end? Uh, <laughs> well, I guess that's relative. I suppose it depends on how busy the page is. Mm, okay. Um, but and. I, and how good you are editing yourself. And I guess this is this is similar for you. So you, you could be rewriting the same manuscript for months and you might never be completely happy with it and you might be thinking, oh, if I change this work, would it be better? Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's the same. It's the same for me. But if I had to say, you know, if I had to put time and um, you know there is not time pressure, which is bad because if there is no time pressure, it's really bad. For that. <laughs> um, I would say you could spend like two, three days sketching, you know, making different compositions and and deciding which one you like the best, and then cleaning the sketch. And then similar in terms of color, uh, but yeah, again, it's all very relative and you know, it probably takes a lot uh, less time if you work digitally like I do than if you work, you know, with traditional media. I can't imagine if you're working with, with watercolors and, and paint, you know, going, suddenly realizing that you don't like I don't know, the color of the background is a massive setback, whereas for me, I just need to turn off a layer and and just do it again. So that actually answers my next question, which was, do you work exclusively digitally? Um, And if so, how did you come to that? Did you always work digitally or did you originally work in other media and then switch or? Well, um, no, I, 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 I used to work with pencils a lot and and watercolors. I've never been very good at watercolors. My problem is I have zero patience <laughs> with paint. So when when I started working digitally, it was like, oh my god, this is the best. <laughs> Come on, sir, this is magic. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, sometimes I still do things like um, pencils, especially if I'm sketching. Sometimes I like to go to my sketchbook, and and sometimes I integrate the sketch in the in the um, final illustration because I like. You know, there's something about the traditional media that you can never quite replicate. Um, on 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 the screen and mm-hmm. those little gestures of your hand or that line that suddenly you know because there's a bit more texture in the paper so the line gets a bit twisted or mm-hmm. those little things for me are um very they are very beautiful and they are very personal and and sometimes if I can I can I I like to I like to keep it. Hmm. Um, yeah. 
Cool. So I'm checking to see if we have more comments. I'm only seeing one right now, but I know that sometimes Facebook Live doesn't show us all the comments. So I'm hoping, um, Kate, if you are watching, <laughs> Kate, uh, Kate Farrell, who's our wonderful uh, head of promotion from... Um, uh oh, some, something's making noise. Uh, from Familius Press, Kate, if you are watching and there are questions that I'm missing, please send me a private message uh, through Facebook and I'll see it because I'm always nervous that I'm missing them. Sometimes I set up a second screen, but I didn't do that today. We had a little issue with setting up the videos. I don't know if you all noticed that it, it showed up a little late because we had a little issue with running it. But if anybody has any questions, we are happy to answer them. Uh, we'll stay on for a couple more minutes and see if any questions come in. Um, but in the meantime, do you have any questions for me, Julia? Um, <laughs> Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> I, I do. Um, I do wonder because I... Um, because I've, I've fantasized about writing picture books, but I think that um, picture books are quite must be quite difficult to write. Um, I do wonder when you're writing a picture book, do you do you write your story and then kind of tone it down for children? Uh, when I mean tone tone it down, I mean like in terms of what words you use. Or does it come naturally to you? You, you know what words to use. Ooh, good question. So this one, this was probably it wasn't the first picture book I wrote, but it definitely. Actually, I can't even remember. I, I wrote this a long time ago, and um, it had been sitting in my drawer for a while. And I believe after Nita's first signs came out from Familius Press, I came across this manuscript and said, oh, this would be perfect for Familius because Familius is very family focused and about very much about developing relationships between parent and child. And so it seemed like this was natural. And I so I just sent it off. Um, but what I recall of writing this one was that it came very naturally and very quickly, unlike other picture book manuscripts that I've done, because the the idea kind of came first and the I kind of knew how the the whole um hook of it was going to work and that it you know it, yeah. it lent itself very well to once you get this idea you kind of know how it's going to develop um so this one came more quickly and came in very um child-friendly language because most of the the text is the dialogue of the mom so i know what i would say as yeah. a mom when i'm playing this game with my child so this one yeah. is maybe a, a different than, than some of the other books I've done. And I will say it's, it's very interesting for me because uh, this was, I don't know where this fell in the number of books that I have out, but the prior to the board books, which of course are even shorter than this one, these are like 150 words each, I had been publishing young adult novels and you can see they're much thicker. So of course yeah. with these and then the one that came after, this one's even, even longer, but um, with those, you know, there's years of writing, years of revision, years of back and forth with an agent, years of back and forth with an editor. Um, and then I, I remember when the editor for The Runaway Shirt called me and she wanted to schedule, you know, a, a call to talk about revisions. And um, I just remember being like, yeah, okay, revisions on this, like, two, 300 word book. <laughs> like, this will be fine. <laughs> Because I was used yeah. to doing revisions on a hundred thousand words, so. Um, but the thing is, with the picture book, you do have less room, so every word has to count. So there is a lot more detailed line editing. There was a lot of back and forth about, you know, this particular sentence. Does it say exactly what we need? Do we need to change, tweak the wording a little bit more? Um, do we even need this word? Can we pull this out? So it's it's a different type wow. of editing. Um, it's not. When, when you're used to very time intensive editing, like you do for young adult or middle grade books, um, picture books can be very freeing in that way. <laughs> of course, all the, the time intensive work is done by the illustrator. Yeah. So um, one of the things I do love about writing picture books is that it's you can fangirl your own books because, you know, if I say, oh, my gosh, this is such a fantastic fantasy novel, then it's I'm being big headed. I think it's fantastic because I wrote it. I wrote the story I wanted to tell. But when it comes to picture books, you know, 50% at least of the work in this is not mine. So I can be like, it's so beautiful. And I'm not being big headed, you know. <laughs> so that's nice. Well, I'm glad you're, you're fun girling. <laughs> I totally am. But to, to get to the, the heart of your question, um, 
like I said, this book came pretty naturally just because of the style and what it was. Um, yeah. A lot of times when I'm writing for younger audiences, I really do have to just get the ideas out first. And then, uh, and, and with a picture book, you don't have to worry so much about reading level because, you know, picture books are usually read to children by adults. So you want to have some sort of aspirational vocabulary in there. You want to have, uh, you want them to be hearing words that are beyond their reading level because they're yeah. usually not reading it. Um, whereas I've done some nonfiction that's kind of leveled readers where it's written at a particular reading level, second or third grade. Um, and in that case, it's a lot of massaging the, the reading level, making sure that each sentence contains one concept rather than having multiple concepts in that sentence. Um, making sure that the vocabulary you're using really is within the reading level range. Um, yeah. yeah. So with picture books, you don't have to worry so much about that um, because they are meant to be read aloud. But but yeah, usually that's that comes in the editing process. <laughs> so. that's, that's good to know. Thanks. <laughs> that, that was really interesting. Yeah, I mean, you have to get the, the ideas down first. I think that's the mo main thing. And one thing I see working with new authors and illustrators, and I'm involved in the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators, so I work with a lot of um, people who are just starting out. And the biggest thing I see is that most people, not most people, but many people, um, write their book and then they think they're done. They're like, okay, I'm ready to bet, I'm ready for my publishing contract now. I'm like, oh, you're just getting started. <laughs> you know, it's, there's so much more that comes after that. And the difference between someone who gets published and someone who doesn't is the person who's willing to understand that and say, okay, let me go get feedback. Let me oh, do the revisions. Oh, persevere. Yeah, yeah, persevere. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, I guess we should wrap this up. I don't see any other questions. I'm going to check over to my messages and see if Kate has uh, – told me anything, but I don't see any others. I hope um, if anybody has made a comment and we didn't see it, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I'm not seeing them. <laughs> Facebook's not showing it to me right now, but um, we yeah, hope that you will. Facebook. Yeah, we hope that you will check out the runaway shirt. You can actually, uh, I'll put a link in the comments to where you can find more information. Actually, let me do that right now. Uh, we actually have a, I believe we have a tiny URL. Let me double check that it works. <laughs> That is tinyurl, yes, slash tinyurl.com slash runaway shirt, which will take you to the page on my website that has all the information about the book and has all the buy links. You can get it on Amazon, on um, IndieBound, on bookshop.org, your favorite online bookstore. Um, <laughs> and I also want to mention that um, I'm involved with a nonprofit organization called Deaf Camps, Inc., I have been on the board for about 20 years now. We run camps for deaf children, and you can purchase signed copies of The Runaway Shirt and actually all of my books through Deaf Camps, Inc., and all the proceeds support scholarships for Deaf Camp. So if you are interested in purchasing signed and or personalized copies, they make great gifts, uh, you can find the link for that on the Runaway Shirt page as well. So any final words for us, Julia? Uh you enjoyed and um, I hope that was illuminating in some way about the process of creating children's books. And I want to say thank you for being here with us. Julia has just gone through a very long and drawn out move. <laughs> And she's in her new home surrounded by boxes, and she agreed to join us. So thank you so much for being with us. I'm going to sign thank you to you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so for much. for having me. This was really exciting. Thanks, Kathy. And I hope that we get to collaborate on future books together, too. Yes. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.